Hello everyone and welcome to This is Central America, and here's Honduras. Now let's hop to it, shall we? Aside from some skinny sections of coast, Honduras is mostly mountain, and into this bumpy, lumpy landscape stepped the first Hondurans. Around 1000 BC, construction began on what would become Copan, a key city of the Maya civilization, from which kings would reign for centuries. Skilled architects and sculptors called it home. This here is a reconstructed temple. Its peak was attained under this gentleman, who unfortunately was captured by a rival Maya leader and beheaded in 738. The 9th century saw the population shrink as Maya civilization itself expired, and the city and surrounding country was in a markedly mortified condition when the Spaniards arrived in the 1500s. Enter the gold-thirsty conquistadors, one of whom had to face the resistance of the war chief of the Lenca people, Lempira. However, the gun is mightier than the spear, and Honduras ended up part of the Spanish Empire, with its capital at Comayagua. Having gotten all the gold they could. The Spaniards moved on to silver, and if there were any bronze around I'm sure they would have taken that too. So the mines were hacked and hewn away at for years by slaves. But the colony itself was not developed as well as other bits of Spain's empire, in no small part due to pesky pirates and disruptive British coastal raids. Just as Spain was making the push to control the coast, building waterfront fortresses like we see here, inescapable change infected the air, and calls for independence bellowed out of all Latin America. 1821 saw Honduras break free from Spain gaining true independence in 1838. There followed the age-old struggle between conservatives and liberals, and the capital was moved to Tegucigalpa in 1880. The economy continued to struggle and foreign investment was promoted, and pretty soon the monetary situation went bananas, literally. That fruit became the country's major export due to the enthusiastic capitalist American promulgation of banana plantations in Honduras, which in turn gave the United States considerable say in the country's affairs. It was the American writer of twist-ending short stories, O. Henry, who coined the term Banana Republic in reference to Honduras. True to that appellation, politically precarious times persisted. President Morales proved a reformer, but was overthrown in a military coup in 1963. There was a brief but memorably named war with El Salvador, the aftermath of which saw over 100,000 Salvadorans kicked out of Honduras. After years of military rule, a civilian was at last elected, who oversaw improved relations with the United States as war engulfed neighboring nations. The American military presence was unpopular with the Hondurans, and reformist hopes for improved improved national conditions deteriorated as crime increased, Honduras becoming a major hotspot in the conveyance of drugs to the US. 1998 saw the Category 5 Hurricane Mitch completely trash the country, leaving thousands dead, tens of thousands of structures destroyed, and over a million people without homes. Under President Zelaya, known for his Stetson cowboy hat and spiffy mustache, various left-wing policies were introduced, including free education for all children. But when the word got out that he planned to alter the constitution, he was ousted in a military coup in 2009, much to the displeasure of the international community. The following years saw Honduras reach ridiculous levels of violence and crime, much of it due to the proliferation of gangs like MS-13 and its bullet-ridden turf wars. The collective carnage contributed to throngs of Hondurans seeking a less tumultuous life in the United States, as their compatriots back home protested their president and corruption. Honduras today has a medium level of human development, meaning there's quite some room for improvement, but plenty of solutions certainly loom in the rich resources of this tropical pocket of Central America. So that's it for Honduras, and that's all for me for now. Bye-bye!